The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Sport and non-sport cards, wrestling items, autographed items. We buy, sell, and trade. M&J Video Games and Collectibles, located at 1049 Queen Street, Southington, Connecticut. Call us at 1-860-479-9223 or 860-93-GAMES. M&J Video Games and Collectibles with Dan Marotti. You did business with Dan Marotti? I wouldn't say I did business with him, but like I I was up there with the Iron Sheik and you know back then. I mean it's... Oh, so Dan Mar- or hold on, we got to slow down. Dan Marotti contacted you to get the Sheik on the show. That's how it worked. I I think early on he did. Yeah. I was up there cuz I was traveling with the Sheik and mm-hmm. so I went I went up there. You know, I think I did. I think I went up there maybe once or twice. So is that where the heat between you, Marotti, because Marotti went behind your back and got the sheik without you? Is that what happened? I, you know, I honestly don't. I honestly don't remember. Really? I don't, know what, I don't remember what the I, I just Marotti was a fraud. I mean, I, I just knew Marotti was. You know, I knew shady. I mean, I just knew what he. You know, what it was. But like again, I go up. I had business to do. I do my business. I try to mind my try to mind my business. Just so that I don't fuck me too much. I'm I'm, I'm okay. So. I guess that's where we differ in some ways, right? It's like you build these relationships with these wrestlers. You can't help it, right? You're traveling with them all the time. You, you know, gotta again, build the trust. You got to do some. Well, kind of a we notice some carny involved in it, but at some point, you actually—I'm assuming—you become friends with them, and when they pass away, you hurt and everything else. So, I don't, again, I'm not going to make this totally about Marathi, but my question to you is this. Why was Marathi a fraud? Now, let's not forget he had a lot of fan, a lot of fans yeah, out he, there. He, he had a good cause channel because he, because he, he, like. He takes adv- takes advantage of the wrestlers, brings them in, gave them you know you know nickel and dime them on the paydays. Always claimed that he needs it for budgets for this or that. Didn't give the sheik what he what he thought he deserved. And I and I even talked to Marathi about it. And you know he said, well, sheik did this, and sheik did that, and you know sheik was a headache. He, and yeah, you know some I went through the same thing with the sheik. But you know again. You, you make a deal, a deal's a deal. If I, if I promise to shoot 500 bucks, he got 500 bucks. He didn't get 499. He got 500 bucks. You know, so I mean, that's kind of the so, kind of thing. Again, you're kind of blasting through it. Going to keep you on pace here. You tell Marathi, hey, I'm kind of the Sheik's agent. You know, you kind of screwed him here. What's the conversation like? The reason I want to get more clarity on this is because we're going to eventually go to the second question after this. So, what is the conversation with Marathi? Is it like, hey, man, you know, really, you should pay him a little more money. He did this. I, I, what does Marathi say? I kind of. Listen, dude, I told you these questions were coming. No, no, no. We can't I, I, beat I guess, around no, the bush. No, not be. It's kind of like Marathi made the deal with the Sheik, and I just came along with the Sheik. So it kind of didn't get too involved with it because it's Marathi was the one that called the Sheik. It's just Sheik was Sheik, uh, Sheik was with me in Jersey, and then I had to go to Boston or wherever because that was the next the next appearance after he was done with mine. He had no way of getting up there, so I had to go up there. So that's that's why I was. That's why I was up. So there. then you're you're assuming that the sheik made an agreement with Marathi, and Marathi paid him exactly what was expected. There's, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. But uh, if you go with the sheik, oh, he's, he's doing, he's asking me for this. He didn't, you know, he didn't do that. Wait a minute, or, wait a minute. Again, I don't clarity. Know, but I don't know. What but he what did the sheik say to you? Did the sheik say, "Hey, uh, he promised me five hundred"? And then he had me do four other things that weren't part of the deal, and I need more money. Help me here. Like, what's the he, conversation? I don't, think, I don't think he ever told, he only said that. It just the way Marathi did things. It just like it irked him a little bit sometimes. So and I so Marathi would say, "Hey, you got an hour interview. I'm paying you this kind of money." And then before you knew it, it was a two hour interview, and he's doing signings and everything uh, else. Kind of, yeah. But it's just it's that's kind of. That's how Marathi did things. It just like took advantage a little bit. So we all know you know Tony Atlas. Do you feel you have a close relationship with Tony Atlas? Yeah. So do I, and so does Farrell, yeah, right? Yeah, love yeah. Tony. So Tony had a close relationship with Dan Marathi. It's been documented on Marathi's videos that Tony Atlas said, hey, Dan, thank you. You helped me pay my mortgage. And he was thankful for being able to do these shoot interviews. And then eventually Tony... 
wasn't happy with the payday and started this hence feud which evolved into the thursday night wars which everybody's aware of there's people on here it's a split 50 50 tony's bullshit dan's bullshit eric sims what do you believe happened and who was at fault here a little bit of this a little bit of a little bit of that i mean it's it kind of go it kind of goes both the promo the the promoter wants the most of you the most out of you for the least money he can pay the talent wants to get you know the most he can get the most he can get out of you and do as little work as possible that's kind of how that's kind of how it, ba it balances it out eric so, do you have a moral line that you draw because you know not to bring up, you know, the dirt from the past, but when Tony and, and Marathi were going at it, Marathi had his rel his relatives on to talk shit about him. Does Eric Sims have a drawing line in your own mind, like, okay, now we've gone too far? Or do you just deal with whatever comes your way because it's part I, of the business? I, or? For me personally, I just deal as, as, as I come. Oh, what did you, you know, think about that, you know, though, I, you know, I, I, when I, you see my, something my, like my, that? My drawing line is, you know, like if you, you, know, you do something against a kid, you mm -hmm. know, and you're found guilty. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care about the talk or the stuff in the the news. If you're literally found guilty in a court of law, you know, mm -hmm. you know maybe it's not the best thing for me to do to work. You know, work work for my company. You know, right. I, don't need, I don't need the heat. Have you ever rejected a client because you thought to yourself, okay, you've done something where I don't even want to be associated with you? Has anybody come you know, across I get that a way? Sometimes I, I I I'm not going to name specific names. Okay, but you know, like if I book a talent and the guy the guy has a you know, it's getting a lot of heat uh, uh, for, say, actions that he did. You know, you know, it, it could be it could be a problem. I kind of you know, unless you're found guilty in a court of law and, and you've done you know you know and you need to be punished for it. You know, I, I don't care. It's business. I'm here to make money. Right. You know, and JB I, I, says he feels that both of them were trying to get over on each other. Here, here's my. But point. that's kind of that's isn't it kind of, isn't it kind of how that is with Nature everybody? Nature of the beast. That's how that's kind of how it I, is. I I honestly. I honestly think Farrow and I have straight business, right? There's no playing around. There's a, there's, this is what we expect. This is what we want. Mm -hmm. This is what you're giving me. You have expectations. Right, and that is it. expect the people to uh, live up to the, their, the expectations. I have, yet, I have yet to really run into anyone that doesn't live up to their expectations. But I will talk about Tony for the example. Me and Tony have built a very close relationship along with Farrow. Um, <clears throat> Tony has never lied to me about anything. Neither has Marty Jannetty, to be honest with you. And neither has Buff Bagwell. Right. Um, right. Neither, you know what? They could keep on and on and on. But I think what Farrow's trying to get with you is you build these relationships. They're your friends. I know there's a business world, but do you think you play Switzerland way too much because it's your business? Bingo. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But is that out of necessity? Yeah, you have to. How hard is that for you? Uh, Come on, everybody's it, got a conscience. It's it, got to come it, at some it, point it, where you say to yourself, it, "What the it, fuck is this business doing it, to me?" It's yeah, yeah. I okay. do. Yeah, but again, unless unless you're raping a, raping a kid, murder somebody, do do something like uh, against humanity, like god awful against humanity. Okay. All you right, know? we're gonna we're gonna revisit this again. They're hurting your friends that you built a relationship with. You know your friends aren't really lying to you, but you really don't want to be in the muck. But so, at some point, at so, a certain age, when do you pick a side, so, Eric Sims? You know, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to gonna let you answer. I want to give you a few other things. Example, you're in battles with agents that are doing the same thing with you every day. I see it in social media. When do you make a stand with those people, right, who continually attack your brand, right, your lifeline, and, and continue to stay Switzerland? Now you can answer the question. So, to, to, to answer that, that question, it, you know, as much as I hate it, it's free enterprise in the marketplace. Anybody could do whatever the fuck they, they, they want, you know, within reason. Don't break the law. But, I mean, whatever they want. So, you know, I, I could be booking uh, Wrestler X. Three other people could be booking that Wrestler X 
too. Do I like it? No, I fucking hate it. I want everybody. By to the play. way, a mess is saying you really don't want to answer these questions. You know, I don't. I don't. I, I, I hate. You know, I, I fucking. I fucking hate it. But what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? No, you can't answer book, the question. You can't book this guy. Fuck you. <laughs> You know, but I may need that. I may need that. A, the guy who booked that vendor. I may need him for somebody else that I want to get my whole hands on, or I may want to get autographs from another talent that I don't book that he has. So, you know, there's a little give and take there. I got to pick and choose my battles of who I want to do that. You with. are playing NWA 1970s and 80s while your competition is trying or attempting to play WWE. They're trying to isolate, destroy, and destroy. Isolate and destroy while you're trying to play. Hey, you book I, here, I, I book I, here. I can't be destroyed. You understand? I'm the OG. <laughs> I could come. I could. I could play. I could come back heavy and hard too. You know. So it's, it, I could. I could play the game just as well as anybody else. How well do the agents get along in this business? Do you guys tolerate each other? You fucking hate each other. Or does it depend? I mean, well, what's that, the... well, that's a that's a good question. Um, for the most part, we all kind of get along with okay. each other okay. at least now. I mean, back then maybe not so much, but now it's okay. it's it's kind of we kind of all network with each other because we kind of whether we like each other or not, we kind of all need each other because everybody has their little niche talents that they that they work with. I'm more of the older, like the '80s, '90s guys. Other people are more of like the current guys. More of the more of the more others are like the recently released people, and everybody has their little people they deal with. Easier so, to break into this business today as a as an upcoming aspiring agent. Anybody or, can break into that. Or back uh, then, it's it's terrible. Anybody can get anybody can it's do bad, it. Today. Good question. Back in, back in back in the day, you could you know you had to know somebody. Man. You had to uh, right. Just, it was a whole different world back then. Right. It is way. T you know, back back in the day, there was only maybe one or two wrestling schools. A few, you know, very right. few. Of course, and you got to know somebody to get you in there. Damn, now you. every every Tom, Dick, and Harry has a wrestling school. Even people who haven't gone to the WWE, you know, and then the, the legends that you know are done and not doing anything anymore, and they open a wrestling school and trying to you know stay relevant and try to pass you know pass it on. Now mm -hmm. you have kids who've never made it anywhere, and they, so they open their own promotion and have their own wrestling school. By, by the and way, they're, and, the, they're we're, and they're teaching. And they're teaching people, and they're teaching them wrong. We're interactive. JB saying he never heard Dan say one good thing about you. I know he always, he Dan always, always bad mouthed the shit. At, he always bad mouthed the shit out of me. Why? But, why? Because I was a threat to him. Threat why does anybody any? Why does anybody ever bad mouth anybody? Because you're a threat. When to, Dan, you're a threat to you're a threat to them. When Dan passed away, did you feel bad? I feel bad when anybody passes away because it's just, you know, I don't wish death on anybody. It was just a freak, freak thing. But, you know, you know, time to move on. Yeah. Fuck him. He's dead. I think I know I'm going to get the answers. Yeah. I'm going to name a few people and I want. <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck him. He's dead. Fuck him. No use talking about him. He's dead. You know, even on MMP, that's a little, that's a little that brutal. That's that a little brutal rough. there, Mr. Sims. Oh, I'm going to name some man. promotions. Tell me what you think of that. Go ahead. KNS. KNS. I like, you know, a lot of people talk about Ken and whatever. I, I have a good business relationship. What do you mean?